Hi Jack, uh, this is Karthik here from 24x7 Learning. Um, firstly, thank you very much for taking our time to be with us. Well, it's I'm very excited to come here. It's an honor to have you amidst us and in the room over here we have about 100 plus chief learning officers and heads of HR of corporate India and they have uh, written some questions which I would read out to you right now. We have, we have Mr. Pawan, who is senior editor of Fortune magazine, and his question is, what's the biggest management challenge of our times, and how does one tackle it? Over to you, Jack. Uh, without question, the, the biggest management challenge of our time is to rally employees around a purpose. Give them a purpose for why they are working in the institution. Make the connection for them between success of the institution and success in their personal lives. Motivate them to see that connection. Excite employees every day to win because winning is good. Winning is what creates the resources that one can use for both personal life as well as expanding the business. So the challenge for every leader is to get in the heart and soul of their employees and teach their employees where they're going, why they're going there, what is the purpose of their life in the business world, and how does it relate to their personal life at home. Thank you, Jack. That was Definitely very inspirational. We have uh, Niloy Das from FedEx, and he is the manager LND India. His question is, what different would you have done as a leader in current times vis-a-vis -vis your leadership actions and decisions in the 70s and the 80s? <clears throat> well, in the 90s. <laughs> And in and, and the, and the last decade, I, I'm now managing 16 companies from Hertz to, to U.S. Food Service to all kinds of global companies in pri private equity. Our companies range in size from 1 billion to 30 billion U.S. dollars. So I'm managing today every day. So I wouldn't do anything differently in terms of rallying people, growing the business, doing all these things. But what I would do, and I've always said this, no manager acts fast enough. Every time you wait too long, you're basically losing something in the, in the competitive world. So the challenge for everyone is to act. Don't sit around. For example, when you have an employee that's not doing well, and it's been there for a long time. Don't keep hoping they'll improve. Take action and put in place people that will do the job. The same thing's true of an opportunity. So please, don't procrastinate. Act. Thank you, Jack. We have another question from a gentleman named Anil Nair, and he is the general manager of Zydus Cadilla, which is a pharma company. And his question is, and it's a little long, and he says, how much do you think that leaders should be judged, not only by their qualities, traits, or abilities to develop people or leaders, but also by their experience of having handled adversities or crises and sailing the organizations through? Well, I <clears throat> guess I, I think all of these things come into the evaluation of an employee. It's absolutely critical that one is able to handle adversity, to get the team rallied back up after a disappointment, to try and excite the team after they've been knocked down. I always say, the best leaders are those that know how to get back on the horse after the horse has thrown them. So you want to have somebody with resilience 
the resilience to come back and be strong. On the other hand, you want somebody that's able to build teams, that's able to excite and grow people. So there are all kinds of characteristics. Ideally, you'd get everything in the same person. That doesn't always happen, unfortunately. That doesn't always happen. So you get the best of what you can get in any one person and supplement it with the rest of the team. Thank you, Jack. We have another question from a gentleman named Deep, and he is from Novartis and is the general manager there. According to him, his question is, according to you, what is most important challenge in building leadership pipeline? Uh, the commitment of the leader to the personnel development activities. It's absolutely critical that the leader not give just lip service to management development, that the leader participate in all evaluations of his, own, his or her own employees, that he looks one or two levels down and identifies high level people, that he rewards his team. He rewards his team for the promotions they create in their organizations. One of the things that leaders often miss <clears throat> is they don't give their managers enough credit for growing people. So for example, I like a leader who's given me five other leaders to move elsewhere in the organization, to strengthen the organization. I think that leader is far more valuable than the late leader who simply grinds out his own organization results and doesn't develop resources, human resources, for the rest of the team. 